going live going live going live live hello everyone welcome back to this youtube channel the immigration boost this is jitendra grower research scholar at smartel kanda so this is live number 81 going live after a long time uh so i'll let a few people join so it's still for 30 458 here in canada okay so uh yeah till then uh, i'm going to announce a few things uh one of them is uh, closer of uh, a few pg programs in uh, some good universities some good colleges so conestoga a few of the a uh, few of the options are already closed for pg for september intake i am talking uh, so secure your seats as soon as possible lambton is almost closed humber many programs are closed and uh, what else uh, jyoti shared me other details as well just give me a second so to to jyoti 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 yeah and uh, tru is closed pg programs in tru are also closed cbu pg programs are closed i guess only one program is available now university of winnipeg pg programs are closed capilano okay it's it's open sheridan many options are already closed pg options are closed and uh, conestoga centennial lambton pg options are almost almost closed so uh just try to secure your seats as soon as possible don't think that uh, there are still 7 months left uh, uh in september intake no uh, it may look like that 7 months are left but uh, due to like number of applications canada is getting right now uh, universities don't have uh, that or and colleges don't have that many seats to accommodate all the students and there are deferments as well so if students are not getting visa for any intake they are deferring further and uh, if there is no may intake in a particular program so student directly defer from january to september so it also happens so uh, it's quite critical for you to secure your admission as soon as possible you can apply for your visa later on as well after 2 months 3 months you can take uh, uh, as much uh, as time uh, you want to take so but secure your admission as soon as possible that is the most uh, uh important thing right now so uh, algoma is open macivan is open right now uh, private universities are open nyit uh, fdu uh, ucw is open trinity western is open so private universities are open uh, public universities are also open uh, vancouver island university is open rru royal roads university is open then uh, what else algoma macivan i have already said these are open then uh, university of regina is open uh, few big universities other universities university of uh, uh, manitoba is open then there are so many colleges which are open right now where uh, you can secure admission these colleges and universities can reopen again but the probability is less so don't take any chance so and try to secure admission as soon as possible okay so uh, in today's live uh, we are we are going to discuss Uh, between canada study visa and lmia work permit so many people are really confused between these two uh, categories and uh, they are unable to decide uh, for which category to apply for in short in one line canada study visa is really straight forward and it is always better to apply uh, given that uh, your profile is suitable and you are uh, uh, able to get admission in a proper university uh, proper uh, university proper uh, college and uh, you are you are getting good enough assurance to get your canada study visa if if uh, you have good enough probability to apply for your visa in that case you should proceed and uh, uh, you should get your canada study visa that is highly recommended so in short canada study visa is recommended over lmia but there are certain scenarios where lmia is better than canada study visa uh, for example uh, you are unable to score 6 uh, in all modules in a, in ielts academic in that case you can surely go for uh, lmia and even if it is costing you higher upfront cost is higher still you need to think about it because canada study visa is not for you you are not getting six in all modules and you need to go for lmia that's the only option uh, or in some scenarios uh, you are not really highly educated in that case also lmia can be your last resort last option and you cannot go for study visa and uh, so th those kind of scenarios are and some kind of jobs are there just just like hospitality or just like uh, retail sector in that case as well uh, lmia is better because the cost is less and you get a real job as well i am going to share everything in detail uh, in this live session so in short uh, if i leave a few exceptions in most of the cases canada study visa is highly recommended 
and uh, only in some cases LMIA is better and LMIA is recommended. Uh, we are going to touch upon visitor visa as well, and we are going to discuss it, uh, that thing. And I'm going to take uh, the questions as well from you. So uh, you can leave your questions in the chat and uh, we can discuss on your questions uh, based on your profiles as well. If, if you have specific profiles uh, and you want to ask for Kerala study visa, just like uh, Ashdeep Kaur uh, uh, question here. So please leave the entire profile uh, in, in my WhatsApp number on my WhatsApp number plus nine one nine eight one two three eight zero double eight two. I'll uh, try to revert you as soon as possible. And uh, please, even if you are asking here, please leave the entire question here. So it is it is going to be better so that uh, I'll be able to understand the entire profile, including education, experience, both things are required. Current job title is also uh, required so that I'll be able to answer you uh, as per your comments. So let's start. So uh, uh, I'm going to answer all the questions. So you can stay here and uh, I'm going to answer questions. If the questions are not answered, in that case, you can uh, leave your questions uh, on WhatsApp and uh, I will revert you there as well. Or you can call me directly after sharing your profile and questions on WhatsApp. Then you can call me as well and we can discuss your questions. So you can directly call. There is no appointment. If I miss the call, I'll try to call you back. Don't worry about it. OK. so. Uh, in this slide, we are discussing about Canada study visa versus LMIA. So LMIA is something which everyone aspires for. So everyone wants to get work permit. Why to go on study? Why to spend time on study? I have already done master's. I have already done uh, MTech. Uh, what study I am going to do now? And then uh, uh, I am having age 37. In this age study, no, it is not for me. So. Uh, most people don't want to study and that is uh, not a cup of tea for everyone at this age. No one wants to study. Even, even I don't want to study. But somehow it becomes like this is a way to reach Canada and it, it, is, it is kind of uh, doing the purpose or solving the purpose for you just by helping you in reaching Canada. Once you are inside Canada, after that, you are surely going to get your PR. And study visa is just a tool to reach Canada. After reaching that, uh, reaching Canada, for most people, means it doesn't have much value. It is just like you already have good good amount of experience, good amount of uh, uh, good good uh, higher studies. Uh, in most cases, it is bachelor's and master's as well. Uh, in some cases, it is PhD as well. Still, uh, you you are trying for your uh, study visa. In that case, it is you are just using it as a tool to reach Canada. Once you are inside Canada, you will complete complete your study. You will get, uh, in most cases, one year of experience in Canada, and you will be perfectly eligible to apply for your PR. So this is a three years of journey in most cases, two years of study, which can be completed in 16 months. And after completing this study, uh, you will get 12 months of experience. And with that, you should be surely able to get your PR, whether it is through PNP or through Express Entry, somewhere uh, this method or that method or TR to PR or, or some method is going to work for you to get your PR done. So it will be done. It should be done in three years if you are not making any mistake. If everything goes per, uh, as per plan, three years, in three years, within three years, you should get your PR in Canada. So that should be the target and that happens as well. But uh, again, you need to study and you need to spend money on that as well. Even if you are not really interested in this, this uh, still, uh, you need to spend money on that and you need to uh, study and you need to give your time to that. And that time you are not working as well. You are not earning as well. So there are two types of costs involved whenever you are applying for a study visa. One is the co cost of study. So it can be um, in most scenario, uh, it is like uh, 18 to 20,000 Canadian dollar per year if you are coming for two years of study. So in most cases, it is $35,000 on average for two years. So that is the cost of study. Then the opportunity cost as well, that whatever you are not earning during that time. So that is also a cost. So one way you are spending money. Second, you are not earning as well. So you are losing money both sides. So that is there in study visa. So that's why people are not really interested. They need to spend time, energy, and then uh, they need to spend money uh, on that. They need to spend time on that. They are not earning as well. So there are so many things you are losing in the entire process. And that's how it becomes like, not a really good option uh, people consider that so why not to go for work permit okay 
So the process to come on work permit is not really straightforward. Many people think that it is really straightforward. It is just like uh, calling the employer, sending an email to him, and uh, he is going to hire you. No, it doesn't work this way in Canada. The process works through LMIA. LMIA is Labor Market Impact Assessment. And this is kind of a permission for a Canadian employer to hire someone from outside Canada. Okay, so it is like if I am a Canadian uh, employer, I have a company in Canada, suppose XYZ uh, IT solutions, something like that. And if I want to hire an IT person from India, so in that case, I need to take that uh, take a permission from Canadian government to hire someone from India because I need to show that I have advertised enough. I require a particular kind of person from uh, uh, from Canada. I advertised. I took interviews, and after taking all the interviews, I am not finding any person here. There are not enough people, good people, uh, to fulfill this position. I need to hire a good IT consultant from India only, and then this LMIA is going to be granted to me to hire someone from India. In most cases, it is valid for six months. So I will get this permission and this permission, with this permission, I will grant an offer letter to you in India. So I am going to grant it, uh, grant an offer to you in India. So it will be, it will have an LMIA plus offer letter. Combinedly, you can apply for your work permit. But this is not really straightforward. Because as an employer, I use it as a tool to earn money, not to hire someone. Because I have enough people inside Canada to hire. If I really want to hire someone, I can hire someone from inside Canada as well. Why to go into hustle of getting an LMIA, involving uh, any immigration lawyer or consultant in this to process my LMIA, spend money on that, then process of hiring you from outside. You are not, not really special for me. There are good enough people with IT skills inside Canada who, who, who can easily join me. People are not getting job, so there are enough people to join me. And they, they can be able to work on a uh, little bit more than uh, uh, daily wages or whatever the minimum amount is there. So, so uh, I, I need not to hire someone from outside. So why should I have this LMIA? Why should I go into, into the hustle of uh, getting an LMIA? It's not required to me. So the, the whole purpose now for this LMIA is earning more and more money because everyone knows that this is also a tool to reach Canada and get PR. So even if I don't require anyone to hire, I have enough employees to work in my company. My company may not even uh, do good in this financial year. Still, I will issue another LMIA or two LMIAs in this year and I would like to sell it. Because if I am selling that LMIA, in that case, I can earn money. And earning money means uh, I can take $20,000, $30,000, $40,000, anything, $50,000, $60,000, $70,000 as well. So this is an additional source of income for the employers. And they also know that if someone is there in Bangladesh, in Pakistan, in India, in, and if they are unable to get study visa, and if they are unable to reach Canada with other tools, if they are in UAE, uh, so if they are not getting anything, in that case, they will spend this money to get work permit to enter in Canada. So this has become a tool to earn money. So it is not really straightforward the, the way you think that, uh, it is just like sending an email to the employer uh, in, on LinkedIn or somewhere and they are going to hire you like this. No, they can't hire you like this. They will have to take permission from government to hire you like this. And that permission, whenever uh, like uh, small level uh, employers, usually they don't require people from outside. They have enough labor force inside and they can hire them. They don't hire them and they use uh, whenever they require actually they hire them from inside, but whenever they issue an LMIA, it is always to sell. In most cases, 99% cases, it is to sell, not uh, rather than hiring someone actually from outside. In most cases, it happens. That's the real reason of frauds as well in India, especially near Chandigarh, Mohali. Uh, there are a lot of fraudsters, fraudsters there, and 
you can find that you can get lmia in 2 lakh rupees 3 lakh rupees 5 lakh rupees bas aapko ticket leni hai and you are going to reach canada through lmia if someone can uh, help you in reaching canada in 2 lakh rupees 3 lakh rupees then everyone will be here inside canada from india because all the middle class people all the middle class people can afford 2 3 5 lakh rupees it's not a big amount even someone having a golgappa ready can also afford 3 4 5 lakh rupees he is also earning 30000 rupees per month he can also afford this much of money so if that is the criteria and if if you can reach here in 3 4 5 lakh rupees uh worth of lmia cost or work permit in that case everyone will be here on lmia but that is not the case in most cases on average lmia cost on average is 50000 dollars so upfront cost is really high in lmia so it is not really straight forward like just applying getting an invitation getting lmia getting offer letter applying for visa and reach here for free no that's not the case so whosoever ask me that i want to go on work permit in that case uh, uh, just tell me the tell me the way to to do it i have just just done 12 i i just want to go on lmia i just want to go on work permit mera work permit lagwa do so it doesn't work this way so you may be having wrong uh, assumptions of lmia you may be having wrong assumptions of work permit but this is not the way it works you should strongly work on your uh, ielts and you should try for study visa only this is not for you so in lmia there are uh, in lmia we can categorize lmia as in two major portions one major uh, one part is jobs where the demand is really really high just like hospitality retail sector okay hospitality is the most prominent sector or trucking industry there also the demand is really high so if the demand is really high in that case you can get lmia on lower cost just just keep it in mind you can get lmia on lower cost that is one thing and then second thing second thing is you can get real job as well with that lmia one the cost is going to be less hospitality sector is one good example and trucking uh, truckers are there uh, drivers are there for them as well so the the demand is really high uh, uh, this industry uh, doesn't get good employees uh, to work proper employees full time employees to work so this industry really require uh, people so the demand is really high if the demand is upwards in that case the cost of lmi is going to be less and you will get real job as well both the benefits are there if you get real job then you are all sorted you are all good it is really highly beneficial for you and you say that okay even after paying we don't get real job yes it happens if you are coming on second type of category where the demand is really less finance sector may be uh, it sector may be marketing sector may be there the lmis are issued just to sell there the cost is going to be high and you may not even get full time job may not even get a job job may be just on paper it can also happen and whenever you just get a job on paper in that case you don't get a salary you just get a salary you need to uh, uh, take it out from your account you need to give it back to the employer and also you need to give plus taxes from your own pocket so one way you are not getting any salary and you need to give taxes from your pocket as well so that is an additional cost on you and then if you want to answer you cannot because you are on closed work permit so legally you cannot work anywhere else so you are just bounded with the, that single employer only that is what lmia means that is closed that will give you closed work permit employer specific work permit and if you are getting employer specific work permit in that case uh, you cannot work anywhere else and if you want to earn for these taxes as well you may need to work in uh, cash that is not a pleasant scenario for you one when you are not getting anything you have paid money just to get this work permit one thing then after paying this money even after paying this money you need to pay extra taxes as well every month until unless you get your pr 
So you need to pay those taxes as well. Additional. Then you need to work on cash maybe to pay these taxes because you need to earn to survive for yourself, for your grocery, for your rent and everything. Plus, uh, you need to pay taxes as well. So you need to earn double money for your survival and for paying the, those taxes as well. So that is not a really good scenario for most people. If you are married and if your husband is coming and your husband or wife will come on spousal work permit and they can work anywhere and they can become uh, this person for you who is going to earn. But during that time as well, you are not working, you are not earning, you are actually spending money on your expenses plus on taxes as well. So your, your husband or your wife, if they are on open work permit and they are working somewhere, they need to earn for everything, for your taxes, for expenses, for everything. That can be the scenario. So you need to decide carefully if that is, a, and that happens in most LMIS where you are not going to get anything. So recently I got a quote from some someone. Uh, the quote was $70,000. And then they are going to give work. They are going to pay 14 hours per, per, per hour. 14 hours is minimum minimum wage okay so they are going to pay 14 hours per uh, 14 dollar per hour that is one thing and they are going to take 12 hours of work and they are going to pay uh, pay for 8 hours so taking extra work from me 12 hours paying me for 8 hours that to minimum wage okay that's how I will earn 70000 uh, dollars i am giving in advance just to get that lmis so those kind of offers are also there so uh, people ask for bizarre uh, kind of amounts and it happens for LMIA and that is a scenario because it's like uh, means if, if they are getting the buyers they are they are selling it on random random amounts people pe people are desperate to enter in Canada but you need to think what you are getting what kind of uh, things are involved in the entire process and if it is really suitable for you just like in trucking you are going to get a real job you are going to get salary. You are going to earn good. And as soon as your uh, uh, birth permit means if it exceeds like uh, one year of experience or so, you are perfectly eligible to apply for PNP and for express entry PR. And you should surely get your PR done. So once once it is good combination for you, then surely go for it. If you are getting in hospitality, you are getting a real job. Cost of LMIA is less. It can be on average $20,000 or it can be lesser than that as well, a little bit more than that, it is perfectly fine. $20,000 on average is, is perfectly fine. So if you are entering in that and then you are getting 17, 18 hours per, per hour, uh, 17, 18 dollars per hour, then that is a good good salary uh, in, in initial time. You are getting a full-time job. And uh, uh, even if you ask for a little bit extra time, you can get that as well. So it is a full-time job with the employer. Employer is going to uh employer is going to help you in the entire process they will help you in pr as well they want you to stay with them because they don't get full-time employees so that is a really win-win scenario for you the cost is also less you are getting a real job and uh, you'll be able to have a good start so that that's all good but in most cases it doesn't happen with it profile finance profile marketing or, or some other profile sales profile business profile it may not happen so in those kind of scenarios, it is not going to be a really pleasant scenario for you where employer is going to harass you, where employer is going to uh, do do random things with you or, or abusive with you or uh, going or asking you to do uh, something. Someone called me from uh, Edmonton only. So he called me and said that I am really frustrated. I cannot even work for a single day for, for that employer. I came here as a butcher or something. So he was in uh, some some cutting job or something. So uh, meat cutting or something. So he came here as meat cutter. So he also got LMIA, he was here, but his employer was really abusive and he, he didn't know what to do. His employer was stopping him to apply for spouse open work permit of the family. He was not supporting him for that as well. So he, I asked him that he, your employer uh, cannot stop you and I can help you in that. But he was kind of really afraid that what if he he got to know that I have applied for spouse open work permit, everything will be ruined, whatever he has done. So he didn't know what to do in that scenario. So that is that kind of things can also happen. So you don't know what is going to happen in future. So be really sure that if everything is good and everything is kind of certain for you, 
that you are entering uh, with LMIA for something good and you are getting something good. In that case, take LMIA. Otherwise, study visa is the path for you. And many people think about LMIA because they, they kind of have an assumption that they are not going to get study visa. Uh, especially in North India, there is a uh, kind of, uh, this impression is there, means if, if you reach 100 consultants, 99 are going to say that if your age is above 30, oh, no, you have a really great study gap, you are not going to get study visa. In my case, I am kind of, I, I get cases. If I get any case where the age is below 30, and there is no refusal, I get, oh, this is a cream case. This is, the, this is one of the best cases I, I have got in the Lord. So this is the scenario with me. And in those type of cases as well, we are carrying 60, 70, 80% visa success rate in the attempts. And even if there are re-attempts, it is almost 100% because if you are not withdrawing, you are surely going to get visa. We have done it. I recently posted a video as well where students have got visa after five refusals. Uh, earlier, Harpreet got visa with six refusal. Mahavin got visa after 10 refusal. Eight from USA, two from Canada. So there are different kind of profiles. Uh, with four and five, now there are n number of students. After age 40, now there are n number of students. After age 50, uh, recently, uh, Mr. Vinod got visa after age 51. Uh, his age is 51. After three refusals, he has got visa. So I, I guess your profile should not be uh, more complex than these profiles. If they can get visa, and if we are able to manage those kind of profiles, you should be able to get visa as well. So I would like to know what kind of complexity your profile has, which cannot be resolved and you cannot get visa. There is no such profile where visa cannot come. In all kind of profiles, visa can come. We need to think, we need to see how it is going to come and what is going to be the better scenario for you, how we need to apply for your visa, which college, which, uh, which, college, which university, which program, uh, how how to handle how to make your profile better and how much to wait for uh, doing all those things so there should be some combination which should get your visa canada study visa so do not jump for lmia unnecessarily when uh, just just because of your assumption that you are not going to get study visa so don't be having an uh, assumption and also i have seen so many people that i have visited th these many consultants everyone said that it is not possible then we stood and uh, then we discussed and I said, what's there in your profile? What's the complexity? I don't even see a complexity. And people have different type of questions that I have, even with the smaller things, small things like I have different names in two documents and my consultant said that I'm not going to get visa due to that. Oh, great. What kind of consultation is that? I don't know. Uh, and how, how people make this type of logics, how consultants make this type of logics, I don't know. But this type of people are also there. And then she was worried that just because in two different documents, the names are a little bit different. Uh, in one document, Patel is there. In the other document, Patel is not there. I'm not going to get visa due to that. So I don't know what kind of consultation is going on. And these consultant, uh, consultants make you believe because if... Uh, uh false things are said again and again by everyone it becomes truth it happens so if 10 consultants are saying same things you you are going to believe it if everyone says that after age 30 after age 25 after three years four years of experience you are not going to get visa if everyone is saying saying the same things you are going to believe for sure and then you will start looking for some other uh some other options like visa visa or lmia and you start looking for other countries like UK or Australia or New Zealand or WhatsApp. Uh, or you uh, completely drop the plan as well. It also happens. So that is not a really, really right approach. You should be aware about everything. And there are videos. My videos are also there. There are other videos uh, as well. Uh, someone applied directly. I forgot the name of the channel. I, I saw it uh, long back. Uh, at age uh, 44, uh, the person got visa. He applied by himself. And... Even people uh, approach me as well that after watching your videos, we got motivated. Uh, we got to know that it is possible to get visa. We applied by, by ourselves and we, are, we also got visa. So there are people who are applying by themselves. They are also getting visa. There are people who are applying with me and they are also getting visa. It should be possible. That's why they are getting visa. Refusals are the part of process. I just recently made a video about uh, refusals and all and reapplications. Just watch that video as well. 
So revisions are the part of process for Canada. If 10 lakh applications are there, Canada cannot allow everyone to enter in a single time. So it is going to be stretched. People are going to get refusal after refusal and then they are going to get visa at some time. It is going to happen for sure. But refusals are there doesn't mean that uh, you should withdraw your application and you are not going to get visa. So even if your profile is complex, even if there are refusals, still you will get visa. There should be the possibility of getting visa and you should uh, uh, you should make your profile correct. You should make your choices correct. Choices in terms of consultant, choices in terms of uh, your program, university, your SOP, documentation, everything should be correct. If everything is correct, then keep reapplying, you will get your visa. So do not change your choice just because of a buzz that Canada has high refusal rate. It is bound to be there because if 10 lakh applications are there, they need to accept 4 lakh, lakh applications or 5 lakh applications. That is the capacity of Canada. If that capacity is there, they cannot uh, uh, allow more people to enter in Canada. They cannot allow 10 lakh people in one intake. They cannot allow 10 lakh people to enter in one uh, particular year. It is not possible. Canada doesn't have that capacity. Not in terms of high housing. It, uh, uh, CBO is uh, facing housing uh, issue there in uh, Sydney. They don't. People are not getting housing, and it is a problem uh, throughout Canada. So, add, uh, as Canada increased the immigration targets, more people are entering in Canada, and once they are there, they are not getting houses. Uh, uh, rents are increasing as well. There are problems with that. And in the terms of capacity of the university, universities also don't have capacity. They are get they are doing more than two times of admissions because they know that students are going to get refusals. And then they defer students, then they defer students because that's the part of the process now. They also know that the refusal rate is 50% or even more than 50% in some cases. In that case, they, they do uh, double admissions. And they know that 50% uh, are going to reach. And if 50% are going to reach uh, uh, to the campus, in that case, uh, they need to have, uh, they need to fill the, all their seats. And this is what is happening. If, if all the students are going to get visas for a particular university, if uh, CPU has 1,000 seats, they have done 2,000 admissions. In that case, if everyone is going to get visa, then how CBU is accommodate, uh, going to accommodate 2,000 students in one intake? They don't have that capacity. So Canada doesn't have capacity to accommodate all the applications at once. So uh, refusals are going to be the part of the process. But don't be afraid of the refusals. Even if you are getting refusals, stick, stay, and reapply. If you are reapplying with the right things, right SOP documentation, you are surely going to get visa. That is going to happen. That is bound to happen. We have done it. And I am telling all those things with experience. So. You need to decide between LMIA versus uh, study visa. Study visa should be the straightforward uh, choice where the money is transparent, everything is transparent. Uh, your fee, first year fee is with the university and your uh, $10,000 GIC is with the bank and your money is really safe, transparent and you, should, you can be sure that the process is straightforward. In LMIA, if you are getting a cool LMIA where everything is good, I have already discussed, then only go for LMIA if, if you are taking just a random LMIA uh, where you already feel that you are going to be exploited. If you are taking that, then you are going to cry once you are inside Canada on that LMIA. So it is not worth. So decide carefully what you are going to take. And it is not really straightforward. When, when you say that, Mera work permit apply kar do. it's like that flight pe bitha do or Canada pocha do. So it doesn't work this way. So you need to decide, you need to think, uh, what is the cost, upfront cost of LMIA is usually higher. And uh, in study visa, it is a bit lower, almost half. In $30,000 approximately, it can cover your first year fee and GIC. But in LMIA, it can it cost you $50,000. In, uh, in some cases, it can be even more than that as well. So you need to see what is the cost in both cases, what is the upfront cost. Uh, in LMIA, the entire cost will be upfront cost. Uh, so what is the upfront cost, what you need to pay in installment, how you are going to manage that, and what is uh, uh, what is the path you are going to take for your PR. So you need to think everything before uh, approaching for any particular category, whether it is study visa or uh, LMIA, don't be an assumption in assumptions that uh, work permit is the right choice. No, it is not the right choice all the time. You need to decide it carefully. One more category is there that is visitor visa. That is, I have made a video about that as well. Just uh, watch that video. It may come in one or two days. 
So visitor visa is also not, not a really cool category because ultimately, if you are applying for visitor visa, one the refusal rate is really high for Canada. You can just simply you can't just simply apply for visitor visa and get it. It it may not happen. Even if you get a visitor visa, it will again go down towards LMIA or study visa. So that that will be your ultimate target. And when you are going to go towards LMIA uh, or study visa, then when this is going to happen ultimately, then apply for these things directly. Why getting a visitor visa? Why having? Uh, why make your profile uh, bad in terms of getting a refusal of visitor visa? Why do all kind of all those kind of things? And then uh, uh, after spoiling your profile, if you even if you get uh, visitor visa, then again you are going towards LMIA or uh, study visa. Why not to apply for these things from India or or from your home country? So that is better. Why to go for visitor visa? So visitor visa is not really recommended from my side, until unless uh, your your family members are there in Canada. If if that is not the case, I don't really recommend. If if you don't have any other option, then only go for visitor visa. So I have made a video uh, specific for that. Uh, must watch in uh, that video as well. In one or two days, it will be there. Uh, on this channel so it will give you clarity on on uh, clarity of thoughts uh, from my side that what i think about visitor visa even if uh, you you have seen that your friend has got visitor visa i will also apply for it no i will not recommend that the reason is same may not happen with you the, your friend may be lucky got the visitor visa you may not be lucky if you are not lucky and your visitor visa is refused then it will become a red flag for your other applications as well whether you are going to apply for study visa or you are going to apply for LMIA, in both cases, visa officer is going to see earlier, earlier you applied for visa visa. It got refused. Now you are applying for a different category. You just want to enter in Canada anyhow. And you are not a right person to give visa. So your other applications will be in danger as well if your visa visa is refused. And there is high probability of refusal in visa visa. So that's why it is also not recommended. So I hope uh, uh, you must have got some clarity. Uh, to decide what visa to apply and some confidence that even if your profile is complex you should be able to get study visa and you should apply for it that is highly recommended and what categories are there where you should uh, apply for LMIA and uh, there can be some situations where you cannot do IELTS at all I'm gone in that case yes we can think about LMIA there can be a situation where you are just 12th pass and your age is like 30, 40, 45. And uh, now there is no scope of doing something else. You need to come on LMIA only. Then we can think about LMIA. So there are certain situations where we we, uh, we can think about LMIA. Uh, mostly these jobs are, uh, you can say that, uh, labor intensive jobs. And uh, these are minimum wage jobs in most cases. If those kind of jobs are there, in that case, LMIA is worth. And in those most cases, uh, you get a real LMIA, a real job where you are going to work and earn as well. But in most like top profile cases, top uh, top profile LMIAs, there the job is not real. If the job is not real, just clear it out before going for LMIA. Just clear it out before uh, taking it, before giving any amount. Just clear it whether the uh, job is going to be a real job or not, how much I am going to earn, how much I need to work, what profile I'm going to work. So clear everything before uh, proceeding for it. Just don't uh, uh, don't go and go with the flow that, oh, everything is really good. We have got all the confidence and now we are just going to get our PR done and LMIA is going to be done, work permit, uh, everything is ready. We are just ready to fly. So first time when you talk to consultants, they will, they, they are kind of that uh, they are going to make you fly in uh, uh, fly for Canada in uh, four or five days. Just need to book the ticket and you are going to reach Canada. It doesn't happen in most cases. So be really careful when you are deciding upon some something and you are just uh, paying some advance and then you stuck. And just to save that advance, you pay more, you pay more, and then you pay the entire money because you are not going to get any refund. So be really careful while, uh, while you are... Uh, uh, approaching someone for uh, to discuss for LMIA and uh, I would advise you don't carry any money with you C carry anything neither in accounts nor in uh, your pockets don't carry anything when you are discussing about uh, LMIA 
because when you when they brainwash you then in that case you are just ready to give money and uh, they just uh, kind of sell you anything in 2 lakh rupees 3 lakh rupees people pay money as well i don't know how why and you don't even think that if if someone can reach uh, canada in 2 3 lakh rupees uh, uh, for work permit then why someone will pay 18 20 lakh rupees spent 18 20 lakh rupees for work uh, for study visa no one will do it so just think about things carefully ask also for a visa visa uh, people think that we will go on visa visa waha ja ke kuch to ho jayega what is that kuch to ho jayega you need to know what is what is that kuch to ho jayega so uh, things don't work this way you should be careful when you are deciding uh, about these things and uh, it can spoil a lot of things for you and you can't even cry after that because once you are here you have spent money your family is behind uh, uh, you are leaving your family behind in india and you can't even cry in front of them that i am suffering i am i am facing so many issues and they have already spent money on you uh, and once you are inside then you can't even ask uh, money for, from them you don't want to ask and you you will be in great trouble and depression as well so uh just think about things carefully and then is uh, then proceed for it i hope things are clear clearer if there is still any question you can ping me on my whatsapp number and i am going to answer the questions as well is it possible to uh, uh is it possible in algoma that we file visa application for may intake and defer to september intake as uh, at the same time yes you can do that we can do that we have, we have been doing it during covid and later on as well so it can be done so you can apply for visa right now and defer your admission as well and uh, but you are going to get visa for main take only and uh, if it is going to be uh, if your last semester is pending at at last you can see it later on uh, then you may require to extend your visa uh, in most cases it is not required because you have some spare time in algoma university uh, for that but if even if it is required it is quite easy and you can extend your visa as well so it is not going to take long time and the process is also easy what is the present trend of uh, visa result is known as ts file for conestoga college for the course of network management may intake admission already secured so uh, uh, first of all it depends uh, whether the program is right for you uh, network security or not if you are working in it infra infrastructure and you have small amount of experience in that case uh with it infra profile uh this program can work good for you but uh, or 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 you are a recent pass out bsc computer science or bca or btech in that case also this program can work for you but if you have good amount of experience in that case i will not really recommend you to proceed for uh, uh, technical programs management programs like project management i usually go with that that is highly recommended and uh, uh, so if you have small experience then only go for technical program otherwise just go for uh, management program this is one thing so i don't know what is your profile so i am just giving you broad idea and uh, in non sts uh, sds has better visa success rate always compared to non sts non sds is more random than sds so uh, it is better to apply under sds category that is highly recommended from my side uh, i just apply in non sts i don't have much idea to be honest my personal idea or personal experience because uh, i have really less cases of non sds i mostly go with i have much mature cases and all of them are able to most of them are able to do uh, ielts and in most cases i go with sds only and uh, for mature cases uh, for them non sds i always call that it is suicidal and i don't really recommend that so that's why i usually get uh, i guess 95 more than 95% cases in sds so i don't have a, uh, i don't have really great idea about non sds visa success rate because i don't have a, uh, many sample points uh, to judge it uh, there may be other channels i guess uh, who just uh, share the timelines and the success rate and all those kind of stuff i i really don't know about it in non sds specifically uh, till now i guess it may be 50 50 for me uh many as specifically i didn't even check specifically for non sts what is my success rate uh, or oh, i check it overall uh, what i carry but not not specifically in non sts canada study visa is possible uh, with 53% uh, marks in bcom if you have completed your bcom little bit uh, little bit earlier uh, than recent times like before like 3 4 5 years back 
uh, then with experience your 55 53% uh, marks are are going to be covered experience is going to show your learning ability 53% marks are not going to play a major role in uh, in your application and you can get your visa with 53% marks as well it is very much possible try to go with a public university uh, you may go with uh, cbu algoma uh, viu mckeven mckeven is also really good admissions are still open so here you can get admission and uh, you can proceed for visa as well so it is very much possible uh, if you are if you have experience then your profile is far stronger with 53% if you don't have experience if you are recent pass out <laughs> then it can become a really big question uh, because uh, you don't have anything to show in terms of your uh, learning ability so your marks are going to say your learning ability so if you are recent pass out then it is going to be a bit tricky you may require to apply multiple times but still it is possible to get visa with this but if you have some amount of experience uh, even if it is small experience still it is going to make your profile far far better and this 53% may not uh, hamper your visa chances low academic with uh, 50% in graduation and uh, uh, to refusals so again the the same similar type of question and similar type of answer so even if uh, you have 50% marks refusals are also there doesn't matter if you have experience in that case 50% uh, marks uh, i don't care about it and there are cases uh, where uh, students are mature they are the age uh, they are the age is about 30 35 they have 10 12 15 years of experience or more than that and their percentage is uh, 40% 45% 42% 46% 48% they got admission in mckeven or in uh, royal roads university so after getting admission they have got visa as well because after having a certain uh, amount of experience your experience is everything and your your study is just gone so if you have completed your degree 10 years back 5 years back 10 years back 10, 15 years back even if you got 50% in uh, during that degree it doesn't matter right now i completed my masters in social work in 2018 uh, with 53 58% marks after that i got a uh, job experience as hr coordinator uh, job since 2018 to till now i obtained hrbm program at algoma university how much visa chances so uh, hrbm uh, is a good program uh, visa chances are also fine but there are pure hr programs as well tru has kpu has nipsing has so there are multiple universities where uh, pure hr uh, management programs are also there algoma is also good it is also a public university and uh, your visa chances are also going to be good uh if you get pure hr management i always recommend that if i don't get anything surely i go with hr management at algoma university that is also a good public university where people have got visa uh with uh, hr management uh, it is a two-year program as well so it is also a really good program and visa success rate uh, success rate is also really good uh for this program as well uh but even better than that there are pure hr management programs in uh, some universities uh, I have taken the name TRU, KPU, Nipsing, or other other public universities where HR management uh, two-year options are there. So there it is going to be even better because they are there they are uh, they have pure HR manager program. Uh, it is not mixed with not bundled like this HRBM. Uh, still, it is a it is a really decent choice, and uh, you you should have good probability of getting visa. How much time we can expect uh, result in Spouse? Right now it is coming in just 20 days. Uh, there are there can be just some random things in Spouse Visa as well. Uh, so uh, I it happened with me recently, but don't worry about uh, those things. If you get ADR or something, additional document request, uh, just don't worry about it. Uh, it is going to be clear if you get it because they are giving it on random basis. So I don't know what they are doing. They are questioning uh, uh, marriage of people unnecessarily. Even if the marriage is three years old, four years old, still they are uh, questioning it unnecessarily. So, uh, but if you get it, uh, I'm going to make uh, a video for that as well. Uh, but if you get it, just don't worry about it. Uh, rest is all fine. Visa success rate uh, is also really good in spouse open work permit. And if if you have uh, explained everything correctly, in that case, you should get visa in just 15, 20 days. Bcom 53% IELTS uh, overall 6.5 no less than. Uh, Six, five years experience, senior sales executive, profile for Canada study visa. 
uh, I guess you shared where you applied. Just give me a second. Let me check again. No. Uh, but where you are applying. Okay. Ashdeep, see, your, your profile is perfectly fine for Canada study visa. Good to go. You can go for a business management program or project management or MBA. All, all these three options, uh, all three options are really good for you. You should get visa with this. Uh, you can apply for uh, project management at McEwen University. You will get admission there as well. Uh, CBU is closed right now uh, for uh, uh, PG level program uh, programs. So you may not get uh, business management at CBU, but we can look for some other option for business management. I need to look for something. Uh, maybe in TRU. TRU is also closed. So I need to look for some business management program. So you can go for business management or project management or MBA. So all these options can work for you and uh, you can get visa as well. Uh, in MBA, I guess you may not get public universities. You may get private universities. So that is not recommended. So you can stick with business management or project management in public universities. And uh, uh, I guess you should be able to get visa. So profile is perfectly fine to get visa. There should not be any hurdle. You can ping me on my WhatsApp number uh, uh, to discuss further and to apply as, as well. What is the visa success rate of Algoma University for Bachelor of Computer Science? So universities don't carry any visa success rate. Universities are universities. It depends on so many factors. So if if the if you are choosing a right program for you, so suppose you, you are coming with uh, some different background, choosing a different program and you get refusal now, what university will do in this kind of scenario? So if you are doing a right choice and it is a public university, all the public universities have good visa success rate. So if you are taking a good choice of program for you, paying first year fee, GIC, you have IELTS 6 in all modules and uh, uh, you are writing a good SOP, documentation is good. If everything is fine, then all the universities are going to give you good visa success rate. So it is a combination of so many factors, not just the university. So I have seen so many consultants saying or students uh, share it with me that my consultant said we are going to apply for St. Clair College Windsor and there the success rate is going to be really high. My, which program that we are going to decide later on. Great. Awesome. <laughs> so these type of things are also there. So it should not be like this. The first thing is to choose the right program, then the right college or university, then SOP and documentation. So there is a sequence in this. Uh, it's not like that I am choosing Algoma University. It has great visa success rate. I am going to choose a random program. I will get visa. No, it is not going to happen. So if you are choosing everything correctly, in that case, Algoma is surely going to support you. Algoma in terms of its reputation. It's a public university. So it is going to support you in the visa application. Should I apply for study visa or LMIA or visa visa? Uh, if I have IT profile... Uh, uh, so I have already answered this. So uh, with IT profile, I guess uh, uh, your LMIA is going to be really costly and you may need to work uh, randomly. Like randomly means uh, in not, uh, not really pleasant scenarios where they are going to harass you. So in this case, it's better to go for study visa at age 42. There are many people who have already got visa at age 42. Recently, Mr. Sanjay also got visa at age 42. Uh, 51, age 51. 46, 45. Now there are so many cases after age 40. I've got visa. So uh, we have good enough confidence to apply for anyone after any number of refusals at any age. So uh, you should proceed for study visa. SDS or non SDS? Always SDS. Oh, 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 oh. So many questions. Same questions. Okay, project management in Algoma University after BSc non-medical is a good choice or not? Yes, it is a really, really good choice. Or you can uh, you can take uh, McEwen University as well. It is also a really good choice. So if you are worried about uh, your PR or PNP, uh, in that case, uh, you can proceed with the uh, McEwen University. The location is Edmonton. And it will help you in getting your PR quickly in uh, through PNP in Edmonton. So it, it is also a really good option. So uh it is a it is a public university so it is having a good uh choice as well a, a good visa success rate as well and uh the fee is same so it is going to be a good choice for you project management is a perfect choice so you can proceed with this plus two non-medical <clears throat> canada apply current lai 
ਰਿਕੁਆਇਰਮੈਂਟ ਕਿੰਨੀ ਚਾਹੀਦੀ ਹੈ ਯੂਜੂਅਲੀ ਕਾਲਜਸ ਆਸਕ ਫੋਰ ਅ 6 ਇਨ ਆਲ ਮੋਡਿਊਲਸ ਮਤਲਬ ਐਡਮਿਸ਼ਨ ਕਮ ਸੇ ਵੀ ਹੋ ਜਾਂਦਾ ਹੈ 5.5 ਦੇ ਸਾਥ ਵੀ ਹੋ ਜਾਂਦਾ ਹੈ ਬਟ ਵੀਜ਼ਾ ਕੇ ਲਈ ਯੂ ਰਿਕੁਆਇਰ 6 ਇਨ ਆਲ ਮੋਡਿਊਲਸ ਆਪਕੋ ਜੋ ਚੋਇਸ ਲੈਣੀ ਚਾਹੀਏ ਯੂ ਕੈਨ ਟੇਕ ਐਨੀ ਵੇਟ ਅ ਸੈਕਿੰਡ ਓਕੇ ਸੋ ਯੂ ਕੈਨ ਟੇਕ ਐਨੀ ਟੈਕਨੀਕਲ ਪ੍ਰੋਗਰਾਮ ਸਟ੍ਰੇਟ ਫਾਰਵਰਡ ਕੰਪਿਊਟਰ ਸਾਇੰਸ ਆਈਟੀ ਦਾ ਪ੍ਰੋਗਰਾਮ ਲੈ ਲਓ ਜਿਆਦਾ ਸੋਚਣੇ ਦੀ ਜ਼ਰੂਰਤ ਨਹੀਂ ਹੈ ਟੇਕ ਐਨੀ ਟੈਕਨੀਕਲ ਪ੍ਰੋਗਰਾਮ ਕੰਪਿਊਟਰ ਸਾਇੰਸ ਆਈਟੀ ਰਿਲੇਟਡ ਐਂਡ ਇਫ ਯੂ ਹੈਵ 6 ਇਨ ਆਲ ਮੋਡਿਊਲਸ 50% ਮਾਰਕਸ 50% ਆਰ ਨੋਟ ਇਨਫ ਨੋਟ ਗੁੱਡ ਕਿਉਂਕਿ 12th ਮੇਂ 50% ਹੋਣੇ ਨਹੀਂ ਚਾਹੀਏ ਇਫ ਯੂ ਹੈਵ 60% ਮਾਰਕਸ ਦੈਨ ਯੂ ਆਰ ਗੁੱਡ ਟੂ ਗੋ ਐਂਡ ਵਿਦ 6 ਇਨ ਆਲ ਮੋਡਿਊਲਸ ਯੂ ਆਰ ਗੁੱਡ ਟੂ ਗੋ ਵਿਦ ਅ ਟੈਕਨੀਕਲ ਨਾਨ ਮੈਡੀਕਲ ਕੀ ਬੈਕਗ੍ਰਾਉਂਡ ਕੇ ਸਾਥ ਆਪਕੋ ਇਟ ਸ਼ੁੱਡ ਗਿਵ ਯੂ ਅ ਰੈਲੀ ਗੁੱਡ ਗੁੱਡ ਚਾਂਸਸ ਆਫ ਗੈਟਿੰਗ ਅ ਵੀਜ਼ਾ ਆ ਹੀ ਜਾਣਾ ਚਾਹੀਏ ਇਫ ਯੂ ਆਰ ਅ ਰੀਸੈਂਟ ਪਰਸਨ ਯੂ ਕੈਨ ਸ਼ੇਅਰ ਯੂਰ ਪ੍ਰੋਫਾਈਲ ਵਿਦ ਮੀ ਕਮਲ ਜੀ ਨੰਬਰ ਦਿਆ ਹੋਇਆ ਆਲਰੇਡੀ ਇਟ ਜਸਟ ਚੈੱਕ ਦ ਫਰਸਟ ਚੈਟ ਕਮੈਂਟ ਇਟ ਇਸ +9198123808082 ਯੂ ਕੈਨ ਪਿੰਗ ਮੀ ਐਂਡ ਵੀ ਕੈਨ ਗਿਵ ਯੂ ਐਡਮਿਸ਼ਨ ਐਂਡ ਵੀਜ਼ਾ ਸਰਵਿਸਿਸ ਐਸ ਵੈਲ ਪਲਸ ਟੂ ਨੋਨ ਮੈਡੀਕਲ ਮੈਥ ਰਿਕੁਆਇਰਮੈਂਟ ਮੈਥ ਐਸਾ ਕੁਝ ਸਪੈਸੀਫਿਕ ਨਹੀਂ ਹੈ ਹਰ ਜਗ੍ਹਾ ਪੇ ਮੈਥ ਰਿਕੁਆਇਰਡ ਨਹੀਂ ਹੁੰਦਾ ਹੈ ਵਿਦਆਊਟ ਮੈਥ ਵਾਲੇ ਵੀ ਕੋਰਸਿਸ ਹੁੰਦੇ ਹਨ ਜਾਂ ਵਿਦਆਊਟ ਮੈਥ ਵੀ ਐਡਮਿਸ਼ਨ ਲੈ ਸਕਦੇ ਹੋ ਐਂਡ ਯਹਾਂ ਪੇ ਸਟੱਡੀ ਮੇ ਆਈ ਡੋਨਟ ਨੋ ਮਤ ਕੁਐਸਚਨ ਮੇਰੇ ਕਲੀਅਰ ਨਹੀਂ ਹੋਆ ਸੋ ਮੈਥ ਐਸਾ ਕੁਝ ਸਪੈਸੀਫਿਕ ਉਹ ਨਹੀਂ ਹੈ ਮੈਥ ਮੇ ਅਗਰ 50% ਮਾਰਕਸ ਹੈ ਤੋ ਆਈ ਗੈਸ ਯੂ ਸ਼ੁੱਡ ਗੈਟ ਐਡਮਿਸ਼ਨ ਅਗਰ ਮੈਥ ਅਗਰ ਆਪਨੇ ਕੁਝ ਸਟੱਡੀ ਕੀਤਾ ਹੈ ਜਿਸ ਮੇ ਮੈਥ ਨਹੀਂ ਸਟੱਡੀ ਕੀਤਾ ਆਪਨੇ ਐਸੇ ਵੀ ਸਬਜੈਕਟਸ ਰਹਤੇ ਹੈ ਕਿ ਮੈਥ ਨਹੀਂ ਪੜਾ ਉਸਕੇ ਬਿਨਾ ਵੀ ਆਪਕਾ ਐਡਮਿਸ਼ਨ ਹੋ ਜਾਂਦਾ ਹੈ ਬਟ ਨਾਨ ਮੈਡੀਕਲ ਮੇ ਆਈ ਗੈਸ ਆਪਕੇ ਪਾਸ ਮੈਥ ਹੋਗਾ ਸੋ 50% ਮਾਰਕਸ ਯੂਜੂਅਲੀ ਰਹਤੇ ਹੀ ਹੈ ਵਹੀ ਮੇਰੇ ਹਿਸਾਬ ਸੇ ਬੈਂਚਮਾਰਕ ਹੋਣਾ ਚਾਹੀਏ UCW is good choice a uh, private universities mein bahut recommend nahi karta hu so agar kuch nahi mil raha to UCW le sakte ho but agar kuch mil raha hai to you should uh, uh, go for a public university that is highly recommended even if you are get, getting a pg diploma uh, to meri choice mein usually mere paas do tarah ke wo rehte hain iske beech mein bada ek uh, tussle chalta rehta hai to project management in a public university versus MBA at UCW to bachcho ko ye do admission mere paas se bahut bahut popularly milte hain to us dono mein wo uh, its kind of tussle is there so i i usually go with public university even if it is a pg diploma meri meri ye choice ek strong choice rehti hai project management ek alag tarah ka strong program hai mere ko bahut uh, uh, its really close to me aur mere liye success cases jitne nikle hain mere jitne bade bade cases hain sare cases mere project management ke sath hi hai so project management is really close to my heart तो वो एक स्ट्रांग चीज है प्लस पब्लिक यूनिवर्सिटी है दोनों चीज का कॉम्बिनेशन बहुत स्ट्रांग है तो इसलिए मैं एमबीए से भी ऊपर आई इजीली टेक प्रोजेक्ट मैनेजमेंट एट पब्लिक यूनिवर्सिटी आई ऑलरेडी हैव सिब्लिंग्स इन कनाडा शी इज अ पीआर नाउ आई एम ट्राइंग फॉर स्टडीज विल इट बिकम अ प्रॉब्लम फॉर स्टूडेंट वीजा यू शुड गेट स्टडी वीजा इसमें दो चीजें हैं आप डिक्लेअर कर भी सकते हो नहीं भी कर सकते हो और एक स्मार्ट वे भी है जस्ट पिंग मी वी कैन टेक केयर ऑफ इट जिसके अंदर ना तो आप हाइड करते हो ना डिक्लेअर करते हो सो दैट इज आल्सो देयर सो जस्ट शेयर योर प्रोफाइल विद मी यू शुड बी एबल टू गेट वीजा देयर इज नो प्रॉब्लम आई एम वर्किंग इन वेदर रोटिंग कंपनी एंड आई हैव ऑप्टेड फॉर लॉजिस्टिक्स कोर्स द कोर्स इज रिलेवेंट आप खुद बताइए आपके अगर बॉस कोर्स सेलेक्ट करने का बड़ा सिंपल मेथड है अगर आपकी कंपनी के अंदर हैरार्की में आपके बॉस उनके बॉस उनके बॉस अगर ये बन सकते हैं आप जैसे अगर आपकी कंपनी के अंदर कोई सप्लाई चेन मैनेजर है तो प्रोग्राम ले लो अगर नहीं है तो मत लो सीधी सी बात है मेरी चॉइस का सिस्टम बड़ा सिंपल है इसको कॉम्प्लेक्स रखना नहीं है और मुझे कॉम्प्लेक्स बनाना भी नहीं इट इज रियली सिंपल सो if someone is someone is working as it software engineer okay so uh, take one
above you in hierarchy in your company or in any other similar company so in that case take that program otherwise don't take that program that is not relevant for you this program is not going to be a good option i am confused between choosing a program related to nursing could you please uh, uh, suggest me any program i recently completed bsc nursing go for healthcare management program if you are if you are doing anything related to healthcare you can go for healthcare management program there is a specific program for healthcare management nursing as well so nursing healthcare managers are also there so uh, you can simply go for healthcare management program it is going to give you uh, good choice so uh, that is going to be the best option for you and if you want to if someone wants to uh, complete something else in canada but you are not get, getting it on pg level in that case what you can do you can select a university or college where both nursing program is there even if it is on ug level and healthcare management is also there okay so you can take visa with healthcare management after reaching to canada go to the university or college and tell them that i don't want to study this i want to study nursing program even if it is a ug diploma just study it so after reaching to canada change it once you change it then you will be able to study the program of your choice so you are not changing your university you are getting both the programs of your choice like nursing and healthcare management in the same college or university and you are changing it internally you need not to take any refund no need, no need to get admission somewhere else quite simple reach here change your program in the same college or university that is one way uh, of studying uh, the program of your choice and getting visa as well so by applying for a ug diploma after bsc nursing you are not compromising your visa chances you will not get get visa with that but with healthcare management you will get visa but you want to study nursing then after reaching here change it to nursing and you will be able to study nursing so that's how it is going to benefit you so uh, you need to have your choices carefully healthcare management is the right choice for you uh, for your visa and you will get visa with that so just share your profile with me on whatsapp uh, +919823808282 just ping me on whatsapp share your profile and we should be able to get your visa as well oh i am working weather okay this is all already done any information about study permit uh, backlog i applied since september oh uh, if your application is stuck right now the timeline is just uh, 15 days that's it under sds category if your file is stuck just wait for uh, the result i also have a few students where the file is stuck and they are also not getting result but nothing can be done in this scenario just wait for your result that's it nothing else should be done okay okay this is done 12 63% ba above 65 and working in okay i have already answered that can you please uh, tell how much time it takes for ifc to provide case notes so the minimum time is uh, 35 days but in most cases they take more than 35 days so it can take some some times it is taking 2 months 3 months 4 months 5 months 6 months 8 months 9 months some cases it doesn't even come so random things are there uh, after covid uh, all those things uh, it 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 has become this this type of things have become the part of process uh, can't control it but it is there so it can take 2 months 3 months on average mere over 58 uh, not less than 54 12 pass out uh, uh ncs you are with math 600 so if you are talking about pt 58 in that case the score score should be good you need 6 in all modules if you have 6 in all, all modules in that case uh, uh, it should work for you so if you are applying for a right program in that case you should uh, get your visa as well it may take some tries because your score is just borderline and you are applying uh, under non sds so that also hampers your visa chances but if you are if you are applying for the right program you can go for business management hospitality management this this program should be good for you if you want to apply just ping me on whatsapp uh, I, i should be able to take care of your application as well canada ho sakta hai 
कैनेडा हो सकता है कैनेडा हो तो सकता है थोड़ा सा स्ट्रगल हो सकता है तो उसके लिए रेडी रहना फाइन बट it's better to show some experience uh, okay this is answered this is answered this is answered this is done 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 that's it uh if anyone applied for study visa extension then he can apply limia if anyone applied for study visa extension then he can apply limia Uh, मुझे समझ नहीं आया ये क्वेश्चन सो यू अप्लाई फॉर स्टडी विज एक्सटेंशन वेन योर स्टडी इज पेंडिंग इफ योर स्टडी इज पेंडिंग इन दैट केस इफ यू आर विदाउट कंप्लीटिंग योर स्टडी इफ यू आर डायरेक्टली गोइंग टू जम्प फॉर एल एम आई ए इन दैट केस विजा ऑफिसर कैन रिफ्यूज योर एप्लीकेशन स्टेटिंग दैट आपने पहले वाला तो कंप्लीट नहीं किया यू आर नॉट कंप्लीटिंग योर स्टडी एंड यू आर आस्किंग फॉर एन एल एम आई ए दैट इज नॉट ए राइट चॉइस दैट इज नॉट ए गुड चॉइस so it's better that you complete your study get your visa extended then after completing your study apply for uh, 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 apply for your pg work permit and get your pg work permit you don't require an lmia once you are spending money on a study visa then you are spending money on lmia what's the point in all these things so uh, you should uh, uh, process it in the right path it will save you money and time everything my profile is uh, btech csc Pass out seventy percent, sixteen backlogs, seven point five working in MSC after graduation, ITS rate. I got refusal a visa five days ago. IT business analytics. So, uh, see, you are a recent pass out student, and your backlogs. If you have submitted the backlog certificate, that is a blunder actually. So, uh, uh, you can get visa with this, but. rather than it business analytics uh, better to proceed with it project management because uh, comparing it business analytics versus project management project management has higher scope of giving you career growth so it has more career growth options compared to business analytics so it's better to go with project management even if you want to study business analytics in that case you can take one year of project management at mckeven university complete your one year of project management then in second year study whatever you want to study that is also a way get your visa and then study whatever you want to study please tell me visa chances my main issue is backlogs so okay backlogs uh, uh, can be covered you have already done uh, a good bit of work with your uh, ielts and your percentage so both the things are fine backlogs you can't hide just don't submit your backlog certificate so that it is not really visible to visa officer so that should give you uh, better chance of getting visa also i have i have asked you to change your program to project management that is a stronger program for visa application compared to it business analytics uh, you can call me to discuss your case as well i got seven bands in ielts and 67% marks in graduation and want to pursue master in canada yeah you can proceed but i am not really sure about your graduation and which masters you want to apply if it is a graduation in uh, uh, engineering in that case you can go for m engineering laurential university is really good option or you can proceed for mba as well so just share your profile on whatsapp and uh, we'll be able to decide uh, what to apply for you my answer my question sir do, 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 do it's already answered everything is answered my refusal letter has no reason uh, no reason was mentioned of refusal don't know what to do just re apply don't worry about it and they do shitty kind of things copy paste everything or oh, everyone gets same same refusal reason and people are confused oh it's written it's not consistent my financial reason was reason blah 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 refusal letters refusal letters don't have real reasons it, those are just copy paste things so so just don't worry about what's written in the refusal letter even if there is nothing just reapply don't worry about it 
I have only one year of experience. How to cover other two two years? Cover with experience, more experience. Just ping me on WhatsApp. Uh, can you share Mr. Patel's timeline after fire refusals? Uh, like when did you apply and uh, uh, what was his intake? Intake was my intake for both of uh, uh, them, but. Uh, uh timeline i guess right now the timeline is 15 days so previous timelines are of no use so just 15 days is the current timeline that should uh, uh, that much of time is required for you to get your result now cash notes are taking time don't know what to do don't know what to do uh, don't do anything your your application should not be dependent upon cash notes why you are worried about cash notes I have already made a video about caps notes. So I shared 10 caps notes at least. Almost all of them had same same thing written in them. Every, every caps notes. Most caps notes have uh, this type of thing. Similar kind of lines you will get here and there. Means they will just cut, paste, cut, paste in, in all the caps notes. So you are not getting anything from caps notes and your application must not be dependent upon caps notes. So just go and watch that video. Why you are worried about cash notes? Even if they are not coming, just, just apply for your visa. Okay. Please suggest me a best university college for nursing program. I need to check. So I need to connect with the admission team to share the options with you. Just share your profile on WhatsApp and uh, we will share all the options with you. Then we can decide where to apply. Is it a problem when uh, applying uh, with 6.56? It is perfect. I just apply with six in all modules. Even in mature cases, over age 35, I still get visa. So it's not a concern. You don't require 6.5. You can just apply with six in all module and get visa as well. After masters, if you are going for a right program, so your uh, choice of program in Canada should not be overlapping with your previous experience or degree. If that is not there in that case, you should get visa. Your IELTS score is not a problem. Your five years experience is perfectly fine as well. Okay, so uh, questions are done. So you can ping me on my number. I am leaving my number again in the chat. Oh, whatever. 981238082. You can ping me on my WhatsApp number. I should be able to proceed for your application. If still there are any questions, just leave your questions uh, in the comment box. Uh, sorry, uh, in the WhatsApp. And uh, I'd be able to answer your questions on WhatsApp as well. You can call me directly as well. Uh, I have got my offer letter from Mulgama University in project management, but the agent is from my city. If I change the agent now, will you guys uh, charge me? Okay, charge upon uh, uh, your age and number of refusals. As your age increases and number of refusals increases, the amount also increases. So yes, there are charges. If you are a recent pass out student, there are uh, no charges. Or you have small experience, like one, two years of experience. In that case, also there are no charges. But if you have uh, more than that, a little bit more experience or uh, your age is increasing in that case, there are going to be charges. And uh, charges keep on increasing as the complexity increases. So with your refusals, Charges are going to be uh, going to be increased, and with your age as well, every five years your charges are going to be increased. So just ping me on WhatsApp. I will share the charges list with you, and uh, uh, you you can decide whether to proceed or not. Uh, if the age is below thirty five, I guess uh, below thirty, the charges are twenty five thousand rupees. Uh, if you are not a recent pass out, if you are a recent pass out, then there are no charges. If your age is below 30, then 25,000. Below 35, uh, below 30, uh, 25,000. Below 35, uh, 35,000. Uh, below 40, 50,000. Below 45, 75,000. Below 50, uh, 1 lakh rupees. So as age increases, uh, charges also increase. So uh, that's how the charges are there. That's it. Can we only show 12 mark sheet in if we got refusal? Depends. I, I don't know. Uh, I don't know the complete question, complete profile. Without that, it's hard to uh, say anything. If we are discussing about 10th and 12th, so you can 